Now here is the symptom that made me turn to Luke and go, I think I'm pregnant. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney. <sighs> Forgive me if I get puffed out in this video. I'm four weeks pregnant and my body apparently thinks that I'm nine months pregnant. I am going to share with you the first symptoms that I had before I got my BFP of pregnancy. So my two week wait symptoms and I started getting symptoms from two DPO. So I'm going to go through each day past ovulation and tell you the symptoms that I've written down for those days. Originally I thought they were all in my head because I was like surely not this early can you get pregnancy symptoms but I'm pretty sure they were pregnancy symptoms who knows I'm pregnant so you know probably before I jump into my symptoms don't forget to subscribe below if you'd like to follow us along on this pregnancy journey give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and let's get into the symptoms I had two symptoms on two DPO that made me think I could be pregnant two days past ovulation. The first symptom was breakouts and I started getting pimples all around like my chin area. I'll usually get one here and there but I had quite a few and it's not very common for me to get a bunch of them at once so I thought maybe that could be a pregnancy symptom. The next one I had is gross TMI. Actually quite a lot of these are TMI so if that grosses you out maybe don't watch this video but this is a two week wait symptom video and it gets kind of gross. The next symptom I had on 2DPO was gassy. Ew. It was so bad it was gross. Um, I just I was so gassy. I don't, I don't know how else to explain that to you guys. I'm, I'm sure you guys didn't figure that one out but that was another thing that I was like Maybe that's a pregnancy symptom, but who knows, maybe I also just ate something. On 3DPO, I got hit with a truckload of symptoms, so I'll go through those with you now. Number one was hunger. I noticed in the morning I was hungry and I wasn't getting as full as I usually do. I had this symptom with Talia, but a lot more severely. I remember it being really bad with her. I could just eat and eat and eat and I wasn't getting full, like I would be hungry 10 minutes later. It's not so much like that for me. I'm just hungry and then I'm full for quite a while, but then I'm hungry again and like really hungry. It just hits me all of a sudden and I get a little bit, I feel a little bit off when I'm hungry now. Another symptom I had on 3DPO was gassy again. Still gassy, still gross. At this point I was like, maybe it's not something I ate, maybe I'm pregnant. On 3DPO, the bloat started too and it has just been relentless. I'm I'm four weeks and one day pregnant now and it has just been non-stop bloat 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 the whole time. I look like I'm six months pregnant and I'm four weeks pregnant so that's that's another symptom that I have. Another symptom that I had on 3DPO which stopped on 3DPO and I did have this symptom with Talia and I thought it was a bit weird was bright yellow like fluorescent pee. I don't know how else to explain that. That could just be because your body is absorbing more water than normal because you're pregnant and I don't know you're dehydrated. I don't know I'm not a doctor. All I know is I had bright fluorescent yellow pee and I was like hey I remember having that with Talia. That could be a sign I'm pregnant. I've also never really heard of another person having this symptom so that just might be a me thing. 3DPO sharp pain started in my uterus. It is called round ligament pain. I was getting sharp pains in my ovaries during ovulation but this was like I remember the round ligament pain when I was pregnant with my first daughter Talia, she's almost two. And now that I've been pregnant, I know exactly what that feels like. And it was definitely round ligament pain. And that started on 3DPO, which is extremely early. But obviously when you're in your two week wait, you are symptom spotting, but at the same time you're like, oh, maybe not. And you try and protect your heart a little bit because you don't want to get upset if the test is negative when it comes to testing. So the sharp pains is a good sign that you're pregnant but I just kind of, oh, you know, whatever, it could be anything. On 3DPO again, this is the last symptom I have for this day. I've heard of other women talk about this symptom and I didn't quite understand it until I experienced it myself. I had my uterus just felt full. I've heard other women say that in early pregnancy symptom videos and I'm like, what are you talking about? And now I get it. But at the same time, I was extremely bloated on this day and the next day and the next day and the next day and I still am bloated but on this particular day I was very very bloated and that could have contributed to the full feeling that I was feeling in my uterus. I don't know. My uterus just felt full. That's everything for 3DPO. 
before DPO. I wrote down that I had a sore back. I think it was just my lower back was a little bit achy. And I had that with Talia as well early on. I had the sharp pains again. I still have had the sharp pains every single day. I still get them if I move the wrong way or turn suddenly or get up suddenly or sit down suddenly. I just get the sharp pains, round ligament pain. On 4DPO, tiredness set in a little bit. I was tired in the morning. I didn't want to get out of bed. Nothing crazy. It wasn't fatigue or anything at that point. It was just, I just felt a little bit run down. I also wrote down on 4DPO that I had that full feeling again in my uterus and I was very bloated that day. 4DPO, I started getting a little bit crampy. It wasn't anything crazy. I had pretty crazy scary cramps with Talia. It was just a little bit that I noticed because I was symptom spotting and if I wasn't symptom spotting I probably wouldn't have noticed them at all if I'm being honest with you. And also for DPO I was gassy again. 5 DPO I wrote down hunger again. Tired so not fatigued and exhausted just a little bit tired and wanting to not get out of bed. Another gross TMI symptom on 5DPO, which I also had with Talia, was creamy CM. It was like creamy, I don't know how else to explain it. I had that with Talia as well. I wasn't one to really monitor my CM before I was pregnant with Talia, so I don't really know what it did throughout my cycle, but it just so happens that around the time I got pregnant after afterwards this time, I got creamy CM, and so I did last time too. Could have been a pregnancy symptom, could just be how my body works, I don't know. 5DPO, I also write, wrote getting up to pee. So I had to get up in the middle of the night to pee, which is pretty unlike me. I don't get out of bed if I don't need to. 6DPO, I wrote crampy again, nothing crazy, just would have probably not noticed it if I wasn't looking out for it. 6DPO, I also had a bit of a dizzy spell. I was doing something at the time, I can't remember. I think it might have been maybe exercising, I can't remember, but either way I just put it down to that. But I thought I'd write it down just in case I was pregnant and it could have been a pregnancy symptom. I noticed on 6DPO also that I was very thirsty. 6DPO I noticed as well that I had even more breakouts happening, I had more pimples show up and I was like what is going on? Now here is the symptom that made me turn to Luke and go, I think I'm pregnant. And this happened on 6DPO. Bleeding gums. I never get bleeding gums. When I was pregnant with Talia, I had bleeding gums a couple of times throughout my pregnancy when I brushed or flossed. And other than being pregnant, I just don't, it just doesn't happen to me. So I was flossing and I started bleeding and I turned to Luke and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm pregnant. And he was like, what? And I was like, my gums are bleeding and he was like what do you mean I'm like that's a pregnancy symptom bleeding gums is an early pregnancy symptom it's a really weird one but it's an early pregnancy symptom so from 6dpo I was like yeah I think I'm pregnant on the afternoon or the night of 6dpo I was convinced myself yep I'm pregnant now on 7dpo which is the next day I'm getting closer to testing I planned to only test from 10dpo onwards which didn't end up happening I tested earlier but 7DPO, I started trying to protect myself a little bit because on 6DPO, I had convinced myself I was pregnant. I was like, on 7DPO, I was like, oh, what if I'm not? And I've just got my hopes up. So this day, I didn't do a whole lot of symptom spotting. I kind of just kept busy and went about my day. I did write a couple of things down. Tired again, baby brain, just off with the fairies and a little bit crampy. They are the only symptoms that I wrote down for that day because I was trying to protect my heart. 8DPO, I wrote a few more things down, and here's why. I tested on 8DPO. Who does that? It's so early. I don't usually test until 10DPO, but I tested on 8DPO because I just wanted to know. I'm assuming that video is up by now. I'm not sure which order these videos are going to be uploaded because I haven't even told you guys that I'm pregnant yet at the time of recording this video. But yes, I filmed myself taking a test at 8DPO. I'll link it down below, and I got a faint positive. It was faint, but it was definitely there. I ended up telling Luke on this day too. I'll also link that video down below if you want to go check that out. So I had a few more symptoms on 8DPO that I wrote down because I knew I was pregnant and I didn't have to protect my heart anymore. 8DPO I wrote I was crampy again. Still, like I said, nothing crazy. I still haven't had any crazy cramps. With Talia I got a specific bout of cramps that I can remember where I literally passed out from the pain. I was in the bathroom in the middle of the night, I thought I needed to throw up, and and then I woke up on the bathroom floor. Like, I remember them being so intense with Talia, I thought I had lost her because of how intense they were. Nothing like that this time around. Baby brain, still have baby brain, had that on 8DPO. Bloating, 
shortness of breath, which started on this day. 8DPO was the first sign of shortness of breath and I still have it. I still get puffed out when I talk, I still get puffed out when I walk up the stairs, but I am also pretty unfit, so that's probably why I don't do cardio. And 8 DPO, I also wrote down nausea, so I have still been having waves of nausea here and there, especially if I haven't eaten for a while. 9 DPO, I wrote down frequent urination, tired, baby brain, and bloating. So you can see a pattern here. The last day that I have written down is 11 DPO. I didn't write anything down for 10 DPO, but I wrote down that my heightened sense of smell started on 11 DPO. I notice now when I go to the shopping center, I can smell everything and I can smell everyone. It's not always pleasant. Today are my early pregnancy symptoms. I got a positive on eight, so I kind of have stopped spotting pregnancy symptoms now because I know that I'm pregnant. I just want to say that the reason I'm making this video is because searching early pregnancy symptoms when you're in your two week wait is something that a lot of people do. I did it myself religiously and I probably watched like 10 different early pregnancy symptom videos and I felt, I said that with an accent, and I felt like it really helped me to watch someone else going through the same thing. The two week wait is, it's not fun, it's rough. But it really helped me to watch those videos and kind of go, oh, I have those symptoms or oh, I don't have those symptoms. I don't know, it kind of helped me. So I'm hoping that this video can help someone out there if you guys are searching for early pregnancy symptoms. Like I said in the beginning of this video, don't forget to subscribe if you would like to follow us along in our journey. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next video guys. Bye!